the last of the proper rotations that we have for C60 is a C2 axis. So we can see our C2 axis here represented by this uh, piece of wood and we notice that to both sides of the stick, left and right, we have hexagons. Top and bottom we have pentagons. So we notice that if we do a 180 degree turn around this particular axis, we get back to the exact same position that we had before. We have hexagons side by side, pentagons top and bottom. So this shows us that C2 is also a symmetry operation of the group. We will find these C2 axes anytime we have two hexagons sharing a side. So these go through what we would consider a carbon-carbon double bond. C60 also has mirror plane symmetry. There are actually 15 mirror planes. Here we have a model that shows one of them and as we look along the mirror plane, you can kind of see the division there, uh, we can see that the left side is mirrored correctly into the right side. So we can continue this around the whole, whole model to verify that this is true. And we can even disassemble the model to see what each of the individual halves look like. And we can see that they're equivalent to each other. Put that one there and slide that one up like that. Uh, another way that we can see the mirror plane symmetry is to actually use a mirror. And I know that I had done this earlier in the series, and I haven't done it that much recently, but let's try this again. So let's see if we can get the angle to work. So here we have half of C60. So if we put it on top of a mirror, we can start to see where the other part's going to be. Let's see how get it like that. There we go. We can actually see that it, if we put it alongside the mirror, we can actually see that the other half of the C60 molecule is actually mirrored uh, through there. So here's a kind of a uh, literal way of demonstrating a mirror plane for the molecule C60. We are also interested in the subgroups of the icosahedral groups I or IH. So we can apply Lagrange's theorem and one of the things we can find out right away is that OH, the octahedral group, is not a subgroup of IH. How do we do that? Well, we know that the group IH has 120 symmetry operations. The octahedral group OH has 48 operations. If we divide 120 by 48, we do not get a whole number. Therefore, we know immediately that OH cannot be a subgroup of IH. The next thing we might want to check is, what about the tetrahedral group TD? Now, TD has 24 symmetry operations. Since 120 divided by 24 equals 5, and 5 is a whole number, it is possible that TD is a subgroup of IH. We would need to investigate further to verify that this is true. Now, it turns out that TD is not a subgroup of IH. We also might want to check D5D. Now the group D5D has 20 symmetry operations. Since 120 divided by 20 equals 6, and 6 is a whole number, it is possible that D5D is a subgroup of IH. Now we would have to investigate further to show that this is true. And now it does turn out that D5D is a subgroup of IH.